Welcome to our second installment of Math on the Move. This video will focus on the fact that there is more than one way to solve a math problem. As students, we may have had teachers who insisted on doing math their way. Let's have a look. Okay, so is this work up to my standards? I did my best. Oh, Olivia, really? And you cut it vertically? We're always, always in my lessons I cut it horizontally. Now, this work here, you know I always label my diagrams as area one and area two. Now, I always include units. That's what we, I taught you in class. This is my way of doing it. In this classroom, we do math my way. You have to show it my way, the way I taught you. These were well-intentioned instructional strategies designed to ensure students have tools to solve math problems. But math can be a creative endeavor. Our best thinking to date tells us that students need to be encouraged to explore solutions and understand that there is more than one way to solve a problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to do today is um, this is your problem for today. You need to find the area and the perimeter. You can find it any way that you want, but the idea is, is that you have to show all of your thinking and use the problem solving success criteria that we developed at the top of the classroom. Okay, right at the very front. So make sure that you're reading through your questions and underlining any key things that you need to use in order to complete the question. Okay? Show all your work in a way that anyone can understand. You can use pictures, diagrams, sketches, um, graphs, um, equations, table of values, or do calculations. Any calculations that you do in your head, make sure that you also show on your paper as well. Okay? You want to select the correct operation to use, okay? and that's going to depend on how you um, decide to work out the question yourself. Okay? But make sure that you're choosing the operation that is appropriate for the work you're showing. Um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, if you need to use a square root, then use a square root. Or if you need to square something, then square something. Okay? Make sure you're showing your formulas and make sure that you're um, uh, filling everything in that you need to know. Okay. Step four is show all the steps, including your proper units that you're using. Um, and there's some examples at the front of the classroom as well for um, distance, which um, are involved in this case right here today. And then step five, correctly answer the question with a therefore statement to summarize the question that's actually being asked. Okay. Are there any questions with what's being asked of you today? Okay, you may get started. Okay, show on. So there are three different ways of showing your work or doing this question and getting a, a solution. And we know this because everyone arrived at the same answers for their area and perimeter. But how do we really know that you were successful? Nicole? They all showed their work. They all showed their work. What else did they do in these problems that enabled them to be successful for their final answer? Erica? They, may, they use the formulas that made sense. So they may or use the area equals length times width, and they also constructed uh, perimeter formulas that worked well um, to each question. Okay. What else did they show to be successful? Jen? Um, they labeled their shape properly and they showed their drawing. Good. They're labeling all their diagrams and filling in all the missing dimensions that weren't there, and then they're showing their cut lines. Good. What else enables them to be successful in this question? JJ? They multiplied math correctly. Right, they're using the proper operations where they need to, the multiplication and the addition. And in some cases, we even did a little bit of subtraction as well. But it had to make sense for the um, information that they were giving on their paper and showing their work. Good. Okay. So now that we know that there are three different ways or more than different ways of doing our work, all we have to do is show our work and that will lead us to success. As parents, when we help our children with math, we often default to doing things the way we were taught. This usually involves applying an algorithm to a problem. Today, teachers are encouraging students to explore other possibilities for solutions. In math, there is a right answer. but there are many paths to this answer. Here's an example of what I mean. In your head, add 63 plus 18. There's one correct answer, but I'm sure if I asked, we would discover at least three different ways to arrive at the answer. When working at home with your child, resist the temptation to fall back to algorithms. Ask your child to 
explain their thinking when presenting a solution. If they are stuck, have them explain how they got to the point that they are at.